Now, speaking of the House, Kevin McCarthy told reporters yesterday that he believes his conference is making progress in its negotiations and anticipates to resume voting on a minibus, as opposed to an omnibus, a minibus, a series of appropriation bills on Tuesday. Now, it's important to note that unlike during other potential shutdowns, this isn't largely a fight between Republicans and Democrats. It's a fight between Republicans and far-right Republicans, an insurgency met, led by members like Florida's uh, Matt Gates and a small number of hardliners who are demanding deep budget cuts and the addition of controversial policies that have basically no chance of passing in the Senate. Since even before this Congress could gavel into session, Gates has been McCarthy's chief antagonist. Tensions between the two men were evident way back in January during the prolonged speakership election. Gates has continued to turn up the heat on McCarthy this week, threatening to oust him and posting on the social media platform X yesterday, quote, we're going to have to address his leadership after we get through this government funding crisis, end quote. But the tension isn't just between uh, Gates and McCarthy. Now the frustrations within the House Republican conference are spilling out into the open, with various members calling their party dysfunctional and calling the process painful. Joining me now is the Republican Congressman Don Bacon of Nebraska. He's a member of the House Agriculture and Armed Services Committees. He also serves as a whip for the Bipartisan Problem Solvers Caucus. Uh, Representative Bacon, it's good to see you. Not a good situation we're in right now. Uh, what does it look like to you? I just gave that my best attempt to have my viewers understand where we are in Congress. What's your perspective? Well, good morning, Allie. And I hate to say it, I think your summary is right on the numbers. I, I wish I could say you were wrong. But it, uh, first thing that you pointed out, it's a small group. You're talking about some votes, five people. Sometimes it's about 10 people. Uh, but re remember, we have 222 Republicans, so you're talking... 5% of the caucus or conference or less, but that's all it takes to disrupt us when you only have a four seat majority. Uh, the fact is we're gonna have to get an agreement with the Senate when this is all said and done. I have recommended to the speaker uh, and our conference that we, we work across the aisle and get a bipartisan deal on spending because we're going to have to do that anyway. Uh, we're going through a lot of gymnastics right now to yeah. get 218, 222 Republicans. And you got five who refuse to do it. Let's just realize that, cut them out, work with the Democrats, make the best deal we can as Republicans, and govern. These five to 10 people don't want to govern. They want a shutdown. They said it yesterday. They want a shutdown. Yeah. Most of us Republicans do not. 95% of us do not want a shutdown, and we should not let them get that. Let's make these five to 10 people irrelevant, work across the aisle, just the way James Madison designed it. These guys are dysfunctional. And there's a, a line that I, that I like about, that I like to say about them. They would vote against the Bible because there's not enough Jesus in it. That's where these guys are at. <laughs> so let's talk about that for a second, because um, I, I, I quoted from the Constitution. There aren't a lot of things in the Constitution that are specific to Congress. There are a few. There's some dates and some times you have to meet and some uh, the regularity with which you have to meet. But this is the main responsibility. You actually have to have a budget and you have to appropriate and you have to do these things. What's what's up with the goals? It, it, I, I describe them as far right sometimes, but I feel like that's inaccurate because it's the dysfunction. It goes beyond ideology. It goes into the idea that folks are meant to govern, whether we vote for you as a Republican or a Democrat to go to Congress. The point is stuff needs to get done and we need you people to spend your time and your resources and your effort negotiating to get it done. What is the motivation of some of these people? Because I can't figure it out. I think on the honest side, uh, something that we could probably all agree on, we're worried about the $33 trillion debt, and we're going to add $2 trillion on this year. <clears throat> I don't believe a shutdown is the right way to handle that, by the way. But some of these folks would rather just shut the government down as a way to deal with the $33 trillion. I'll also be honest with you, Allie, that the, some of these folks, they live in an angry part of the universe. Uh, it's all about uh, DOJ going after, you know, uh, you know politicized indictments not so they're in their own echo chamber and they do have some of these folks have a burn it down uh, mindset but i think on the where we could maybe agree we have a 33 trillion dollar debt we got to get our arms around this uh, and i think shutting it down is not the answer but that's where they're taking us they want to do 30 percent cuts in some of the discretionary spending it's not going to fly uh first of all you know you got to get it through the senate and you got a democrat president uh so uh, once again we should negotiate the best deal we can. Yeah. 
and knowing that we got a Democrat Senate and a Democrat president, and you know we put our case in front of the American people on November 24. That's how it's supposed to work. I, I do. We do have some folks. They really think that we can make demands on the Senate, and, and Chuck Schumer will just buckle. And I don't think they're. I don't think they're living with their feet on the ground or living in a reality, real reality. Um, it, I, I remember mentioning to one member, so you want to stop this bill, but you think you're going to get a better bill out of the Senate? And they go, yes. I'm like, Chuck Schumer runs the Senate. You're not going right. to get a better bill than what we just negotiated. So I, I, I don't agree with them. But I can't say this. We, we should be tackling $33 trillion debt. We got, we got to find a way to get our arms around that. So you talked about the, the honest concern about the $33 trillion. And I, you know, I would refer to that as a good faith concern, right? The people who think that that's a real yeah. debate that should happen. And by the way, believe it or not, Congress has mechanisms for that debate to actually occur. They may not be all that effective these days, but th that's an ideological and important debate that, by the way, one day you and I will, will have on this show. What what is it like to be Don Bacon these days? Because every time something crazy happens in Congress, I end up invoking your name because you're the guy who's out there making the reasonable statement. You're the guy who's out there saying this isn't the way we're going to do it. But Don Bacon, you remain a Republican. It's got to be tough being the Republican who's on MSNBC this morning telling us about what's wrong with the Republican conference. Well, you know, I'm a Reagan Republican down deep. Uh, I. He was the first guy I campaigned for when I was 13 years old. I love Ike Eisenhower. I love Abraham Lincoln. I'm, I'm a the party of Reagan and Lincoln. Mark, I these we have some folks that have I think strayed away from the Reagan philosophy of agreeing with 80, take 80 percent and make a deal. Uh, but these folks want 100 percent and would prefer zero versus getting 95 percent. Literally, some of these guys have been offered about everything. Their goalposts move with every day and so and you know there's like five or ten of them i want mean, to come back to that 95 percent of us yeah. are not these five percent so we just got to keep this uh, keep this down uh, reality but this five percent is tainting us because the outside sees this dysfunction and it's this five percent doing it and i think it does reflect poorly on the rest of us and they should know that most of these folks would rather be in the minority or they can just yell and scream and vote no when you're in the majority you got to govern right and that means taking 80% or 90% imperfect. In Congress, there is very seldom a perfect deal. Yep. Most everything we do is imperfect because there's 435 of us in the House and 100 of us in the Senate, and that's just reality. Uh, we, Ronald Reagan had it right. If I can agree with you 80% of the time, Let's do it. We're good. Uh, Congressman, I, I, I don't know exactly when we're going to do this, but I'm going to ask you right now if you can come back, and because I, I need to talk to you about agriculture and the farm bill and some important things that uh, we city slickers don't talk enough about, but is really crucial to how we feed this country. So I'm inviting you now to have that conversation again. The Republican Congressman Don Bacon of Nebraska.